Hello, uh, just a short one today, uh, looking at a more practical DC motor that I mentioned last time. So, let me get a pointer here. So, remember that last time we actually looked at this rotor. So, remember that each pair of these wire cross sections, so say this one, and this one, and just change color here, this one, and this one, and so on and so forth, all the way around the rotor. Those, each are, each, each of those coils is only contacted by the brushes. So right now the, uh, the purple ones would be connected to the brushes through these two commutator segments. The idea being that these loops go out and do the loop thing, come all the way down the rotor, come through here and hook to those segments on the rotating piece. And then because they are in contact with the stationary brushes here, they're the ones getting current. And that, remember, in the horizontal position is approximately where you're getting maximum torque if you have a, a two-pole magnet. Now, um, what we've got here is four poles. So we've got one, two, three, four. And the idea behind having four poles, in addition to having all of these loops, is so, as it says there in the heading, uh, so that you have even more uniform torque around the whole rotation of the motor. And in addition to this, having four magnets also intensifies the field in this, this outer portion of the rotor where the, uh, where the currents are actually uh, running through each one of those wires. Remember, these are cross sections of the wire, so the current's either kind of going into the page or into the screen or out of the screen, depending on uh, which side of each set of loops you're looking at. Okay? Now, to that point, let's take a look at um, this picture here. So this is just a, a field map of what it looks like when you have four electromagnets arranged in this way. And you see that if you look at the field lines, there's really not much field right in the center here. The field lines get kind of sparse in the center where the sort of middle of this rotor would be. And you'd think, well, maybe that's a bad thing. But remember, we only really care about the field in being intense right here, right? Or right here where the current carrying wires actually are. And remember, they're on the outside of the rotor. They're not internal to it. And so it's important, instead of having the field be really intense there in the very middle, switch to another color again, uh, you want the field to be really intense going from north to south, north to south, north to south, etc., etc., all the way around, so that in the region where you've got these current carrying wires, you've got really intense magnetic field in that sort of the outer edge of the rotor. Okay, so uh, yeah, that bends around the direction of the magnetic field and makes our analysis of what coil is receiving most torque, et cetera, et cetera, a little more complicated. But the basic idea is to intensify the field and make it stronger where the current is actually flowing in those wires. All right, so when we come back next time, we're gonna start talking about the generator effect, and I'll see you then.